access look at the sport. Drivers waiting on pit road now to come out onto the track. After the large pack went out to start this practice, now it's thinning out to where you're seeing single car runs. And they're doing that because a lot of guys, as we see, one car slow on the heat right there, right? At the center of the tri-oval. Trying to find a spot. That's Kevin Harvick in the four. See the 19 of Carl Edwards. We saw Joe Gibbs racing go out and do a little bit different strategy to start off with. Single car runs. But a lot of these drivers are thinking about qualifying, which is in single car runs at Talladega. I don't know if the four of Kevin Harvick was simulating a restart, but he was slow on the eight foot through the front stretch. It's hard to know what he was trying to do there, Jeff. I don't know, unless he's, I don't know, unless he's potentially working on pit road and just want to make sure he stay out of the way of people making not qualifying runs, or I'm not sure. He's coming back in the middle, huh? We saw the 19 of Carl Edwards as we ride along with Kevin Harvick, and he comes on the pit road and also the 19 of Carl Edwards going on the pit road. This might not be a place that Carl Edwards will feel very comfortable as it being an elimination race because the 19 has been involved in accidents at all three late races this year. I feel his pain. That's how it goes. It just seems like you come to these racetracks and you know, you get into wrecks and you'll go in a couple years and you won't get in a wreck. You see right there, he did anything wrong. He did anything wrong with Daytona. This wrong place at the wrong you know, the right time. And right here, he had a tire problem. He came across Dale Jr. So that's what, that's what scares everybody. Is that, you know, right here, he's riding along, mind his own business. Somebody has a problem, takes him out. And that's all these chase guys, they're just terrified of this. They, they're just so much out of your control. There's the finishes. Fifth at Daytona, he bounced back. Obviously, uh, not a bad finish for Carl, but involved in an incident. Then at Talladega, 35th. Daytona in July, 25th. So definitely not a racetrack where I'm sure he comes into it feeling comfortable. Mike? And uh, you're probably right, Rick, uh, you know, especially considering he's never won a restrictor plate race. So uh, you can imagine what he might have been feeling after uh, he experienced the vibration in that first run. Uh, immediately came back to the garage. They changed tires. Uh, apparently the vibration went away. He did not say anything during the course of that second run, but he's back in the garage once again making adjustments. But I want to go back to the first thing I said, guys. Uh, and Jeff, especially, I want to get your perspective on this. He's never won at a restrictor plate track. So... For a driver who's taken many attempts at getting to victory lane in a place like this, what do you think it's like when you come into a restricted white track, a, a place where you've never been able to find victory lane? Well, Mike, unfortunately, I know exactly what it's like. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, honestly, you just have to keep looking at how to be better. You have to keep studying film. You have to keep talking to your teammates. Uh, you really need, this is a kind of racetrack that you really can watch and pay attention to what other people have done in the past races to understand how they won the race and then learn through that. You just got to keep coming and keep pushing ahead and keep keep trying. I mean, really, that's all you can do. This is very situational wet racing. It's very different. Uh, it's more than just having a fast car. It's more than just having good pitch strategy. It's more than just having a good driver. Some of it is situational that you can't control. But the things that you can control, you just have to keep looking and studying, trying to be better. Do you know what your record is here, Jeff? Oh, for something. In 24 starts here, did you know? I'm sorry. That, just, that, that was Carl. Carl has seven DNFs in 24 starts here, but... That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Carl's going to disagree with you, but, but this is a racetrack where when you came, you had you were an opposite end of the spectrum. You had good finishes, and I'm sure walked away thinking, "All right, we did it right that time." But then you'd come back and you'd do the exact same thing and have bad finishes. Well, I, I had a year, I had two years back to back where we had a really good year. Uh, I think we finished an average of fifth, sixth, something like that on circuit plate races. Then the next year, I got a record in every plate race, trying to do the same thing. And that's when it gets frustrating. That's when you look at yourself and do, what can I do? But there is there is a reason that people are multi-time winners. There is a skill and an art to it. Well, I think the reason is the equipment, excuse me, does matter. And we both mentioned how 
early on in this practice in that group. We saw this too. Brad Kozlowski made some moves without a lot of help and was able to clear cars, pass cars. And I just think that fast cars, while they don't guarantee success, in the end, you still want to have a fast car. Oh, yeah. And it allows you to be more aggressive. It allows you to be less dependent on other cars. So I think you start to see teams have belief. They believe in that. They try to put as much effort possible in. Riding along with Brad Keselowski, he has won the last two restrictor plate races. What kind of company would he join if he'd be able to win here on Sunday? Well, Dale Earnhardt Sr. won three in a row. Won at Talladega. Had his first career Spring Cup Series win at Daytona in the summer. And back to victory lane at Talladega all in 1990. Three straight restrictor plate race wins. He's the only one to have done that. Brad Keselowski could equal that feat on Sunday. Well, we talk a lot about how you, how you run well at these racetracks, and one of the great ways to do it is side draft right here. We have NASCAR Heat Evolution car in the wind tunnel. The car pulls up next to it. When it pulls up next to it, it dumps all the air from the side of the car onto the rear sport, dragging that inside car down, creating a tremendous amount of drag, slowing it down so that the car on the outside can take advantage. Yeah, when you're talking about drafting, you think about making an advantage for your car, but side drafting is actually putting the other car at a disadvantage. And Brad Kozlowski has shown his very, very good this, this is a perfect example of the two close to the quarter panel of the six of Trevor Bay. The two doesn't go forward as much as the six of Trevor Bay gets pulled backward. He slows down, allows the two to get ahead of him. That's so then right here, same thing. Keselowski racing the 41, a bush to the lead. He gets his fender as long as alongside his quarter panel, able to clear the 41, and then goes on and wins the commencement race. That's using every opportunity you have. Then we go to Daytona. Keselowski again, racing Carl Edwards this time. Look at the move he makes. He goes all the way down the racetrack, gets on his right rear, sucks that 19 back, clears, clears him, and does the same thing he and Jamie Murray trying to side draft each other. And they go in the final move, good turn to left, and 18 tries to walk him, goes on the rear. This phenomenon of side drafting, while it's not new, the more teams understand it, the more drivers understand it, I believe that's where we start to see the wrecks. Because as you mentioned, Jeff, the one of Jamie and Murray, the two of Brad Kozlowski, and that shot right there, well, they both have the same idea. It's like changing lanes on the interstate. It's safe until you both change at the same time and it makes contact with a big accident. And look who broke into the top ten. Kevin Harvick. But he already has a win. He's safe on to the round of eight.